Alpha. Mind, you said there's some stuff that, you know, how, how you define them that you uh, maybe said you hadn't done the best. Is yeah, for sure. Learning experiences that yeah. you'd be willing to touch on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, in the early stages of launching the church, I put an unnecessary amount of pressure on myself and on our ministry. So there is a natural pressure that comes with moving forward, right? Like, um, I'm going to plug what I think is one of the best books for any entrepreneur or, or person that considers themselves creative, trying to create something is The War of Art. Um, it's my favorite book. I've read a million times. But, you know, The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield, and it's not a church book, so you definitely want to check it out. Uh, War he, of Art. The right. War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, not to be consider, uh, uh, just, um, confused with The Art of War by okay. General Sue, okay. which is also a really great book. Did you accidentally end up reading that one? I think I did. I think someone recommended The War of Art. I got The Art of War, yeah. which is by, it's really, really good. Talks yeah. about, uh, you know, um, winning and how the yeah. warrior wins before the battle begins, like great book. Yeah. And then I was, and then I was like, oh, dude, that was a great book. I love you. And then the guy's like, no, War of Art. So I was really surprised, you know, by War of Art. But anyways, in the War of Art, he talks about, you know, basically when you move forward on what you're called to do. Mm -hmm. um, and he, Stephen Pressfield isn't necessarily a Christian, nor does he talk about, you know, things within the context of a church. But he talks about how everyone was created to do something. And when you move on that, you're going to face resistance. You're going to face a, pr a, a mm -hmm. pressure. And so I think for me early on, I knew that going into it, but then I created an unnecessary amount of pressure on myself. And I think that this, I think it happens to a lot of people where it's just like, man, we're going to start this church. And, you know, and I started expecting things of myself that no one else was expecting. I started putting way too much pressure on, you know, and again, like I sweat the small stuff. To an extent, and I think part of leadership, part of owning a business, part of operating an organization is growing in your discernment on at what level do you just create some give? Yeah. Like where it's like, okay, I sweat the small stuff mm -hmm. up until this point. So early on in that, you know, launching the church, like I just was too hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I got way too discouraged early on. Um, and then, and this was the worst part of it, I started projecting my insecurities onto the people around me. Mm -hmm. And then there were people that weren't so pumped up about the church. And I'm like, what the frick? Like, mm -hmm. you need to be dedicated to this. And they mm -hmm. don't go to our church anymore. You know, like, and I regret that. I wish I could go back and, and like tell myself to chillax, not because it doesn't matter, but because like, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. I think another big thing is, um, and I think this is a thing that I'm still learning about, especially with having a three-week-year-old um, little boy, is treasuring the season that you're in. You know, like part of being an entrepreneur is looking to the future, right? Like that was what you guys are entrepreneurs. Like you who are watching, you're an entrepreneur. A big part of it is that like you are looking to the future. You see that there is something that does not exist and you feel compelled to create it. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got this idea of like looking to the future and you constantly have to be looking to the future on what needs to be done, what needs to change. We were talking about that like with COVID-19. Like part of my job as the visionary of our organization is I have to be thinking about what is not just good right now, but where do we need to go and what are the changes that need to happen? And yet I also have to like treasure where I'm at right now. Yeah. And man, I wish I could go back and starting the organization – and just treasured some of the opportunities that we had. I was so like, we got to get to 100 people, which we did. Like 100 people in the church world is considered critical mass, which is like you need to be about 100 people to sustain and grow your ministry. Otherwise, if you don't have 100 people, you're not growing towards 100 people, you will die. Mm -hmm. So fun facts in the, the non-church world, the average church is 75 people after five years of existence. And then the average church dies after those five years. Mm. And so for me early on, it was like, we got to get to 100. We got to get to 100. We got, well, we started with 30. After the first three months, we were at 50. And I'm like, this is not going well. And I started to unnecessarily put pressure on myself. It started to strain my marriage. It started to strain me mentally. And I wasn't leading well out of that. And so a, p a pivotal moment in mine was when I had, I brought in good counsel, right? Like get people in your life that are where you want to go and said, hey, this is where we're at. I feel like this sucks. Can you tell me, does it suck? 
And it was amazing to have good counsel go, no, bro, you're doing a great job, actually. Like, given where you started a church, given how you started, like, you're moving forward. And that freed me to go, okay, Mm -hmm. let's run with that. And it's amazing when you remove that unnecessary pressure how much, number one, you start enjoying life a little bit more. You start enjoying what you're doing. And, And then you start, actually, you start producing better content you start producing a better product you know i think we have this like romantic idea of innovation that it's like down to the wire like pressure people breathing down your neck and certainly there have been great innovations and inventions born out of that Mm -hmm. but then there's also the innovation and the invention of the light bulb which dude failed thousands of times get to get there yeah that doesn't happen unless you create a capacity to fail yeah. thousands of times, you yeah. know? <laughs> I just finished a book called Atomic Habits. I Bro, that's a great book. Um, that, in that graph where he talks about how most people think, like, if you make incremental changes, yep. 1% a day, yep. 1% a day, yep. by the end of the year, you're 365% better than you were. And right. most people see success as a straight line when often it's a curve that goes Yep. Well, why do we up. see why do we think that? Because we see, we see examples yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. That's like, all we see on social media. Yeah, like media, that's what makes you know? the news. Mm-hmm. Like news, you know, what makes the news is the overnight success, which does happen. Yeah. There are music Rare. artists yeah. that put together their little EP and they post it on SoundCloud and boom, all of yeah. a sudden like and then you as a musician, you're trying to make a go of it. And, and you're five, you, yeah, yeah. You've been doing it for ten yeah. years, and like, why isn't this where? It's like yeah. because that is an anomaly. Yeah. That is the uh, another great book. Um, mm-hmm. That is the outlier. Yeah. What is more common, and I think, and I think you would agree, what is more um, meaningful mm-hmm. is commitment, mm-hmm. is uh, effort, long term effort. You know, so like for us, like. I, when we started the church, I was like, man, I want to be here within the first year. Now, my mindset is I want to build something over the entirety of my life that lasts after I die. So now I'm not thinking and even like three, like what's your three to five year plan? Well, I would say our three to five year plan is to be in a facility right now. We're set up teardown is to launch, um, you know, a huge heart of our church is the next generation. So we want to be in the education. We want to launch a preschool wherever we end up getting a facility. So that'd be like three to five year. Yeah. But like, I'm starting to think and dream and starting to move forward on like, what could I do in 25 years? No one talks about that, especially like no 20 year old is thinking by the time I'm 45, I want, no, no, you're thinking by the time I'm 25, I want to be a millionaire. By the time I'm 30, (laughs) I want to be chatted up with Gary Veach and like (laughs) Gary V and like Gary Veach. I think I just, I think I just combined a pastor, bro. I, (laughs) dude, I just combined, I just combined Chad Veach, who is a really popular pastor with Gary V. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's classic. Anyways, like those, and it's like, if that fires you up, yeah. awesome, but it will also cripple you and it will also kill your momentum when you get to 30 and you didn't make it. And then you're like, well, I guess I'll just go do this because I couldn't make it. So it's like, or you could just keep on moving forward and maybe 35 is your year. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm 32 and I feel outrageously young and I'll you know I guess I'll give a plug for Gary V he's helped me realize that like Mm -hmm. 32 like I'm you know a healthy individual and lord willingly like anything could happen Mm -hmm. like god forbid that I die tomorrow but it could happen but statistics would say I'll probably live till I'm 80, even 90 years. I'm on that, yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a realist, man. Like, it is. It's life. Like, there's life and death. And so, like, Lord willing, I'm going to live till I'm 80. So I'm on the front end of this mm-hmm. thing. I'm like 32. Like, I still got some years to even figure some things out. Yeah. Man, that was totally different from how I perceived the church in uh, when we first started. It was like, we have to be here by the time I'm 32. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, hmm. I've heard on the other end of that as well that... If you set these goals and if you obtain them by 35, 40, whatnot, um, from your, you know, your yeah. viewpoint is how much can I do as opposed to like, I just want to do this. Once you reach this, you can almost feel a sense of what now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. And so uh, this is another huge plug for a book, Infinite Game by mm-hmm. uh, uh, Simon, um, not Simon, or not uh, Seth Godin, Simon Sinek. 
So I don't oh, know if you've yeah. read Start yeah. With Why. It's a really stuff. popular book. Stuff, yeah. But Infinite Game, I think, is way better than Start With Why. Start With Why is amazing. But Infinite Game is super practical. And that's where, and I probably just, you know, uh, unconsciously plagiarized uh, him. But where you're talking about, like, being a part of a mission, mm-hmm. like, trying to solve a problem that you can never solve. Mm-hmm. Like that's the mission you want to be a part of because number one, it's, 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 uh, it's job security. Like, okay. So like if you, if like, so for instance, like, um, there's organizations that exist to solve poverty. You'll never solve poverty. <laughs> like you never are. Someone's gonna be poor, yeah. You, yeah. Someone's always going to be poor. Okay. Yeah. So like you're going to, you're in the business of combating against the cycle of poverty in our world, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like it's sad. So I'm wondering, it's sad that that's always going to exist, but you're always going to have a meaning to your life. You're always going to have a mission. And so it's like, you know, if like my grandiose mission is like, we want to, we want to reach 500 people. Well, you know, if you hit 500 people, that's amazing. But guess what? Now you just killed your vision statement. (laughs) And so like for us, the way that we say it is the mission of Brave Church is to help people meet Jesus and move forward in the life they're meant to live. There's always someone that needs to meet Jesus. And there's a heck of a lot of people that need some help moving forward in the life they're meant to live. And so I've, I've literally created, it's my church's mission statement, but it's also my life mission statement. And I'm never going to hit that point where it's just like, oh, what now? Mm-hmm. I'm always going to have work to do. Yeah. So you want to move to uh, a facility. You said mm-hmm. right now you're in Milwaukee Lutheran. How did, uh, yeah. how did, how did you come? Because I'm assuming that this is your first location, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we... Hey, guys, thanks for watching our podcast today. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you'd be willing to support us, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, comment in the section below what questions you want to hear us answer or what industries do you want to see us go after. And if you didn't like my face, check out Dan's face. It might be more to your fitting. Otherwise, have a good day, guys. Thanks.